first of all, how are you enjoying the Broadway con so far? A couple more sips of this, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be gold. <laughs> I'm good. I love Broadway con. I I'm actually upset that I can't stay longer because I this weekend I have shows. Last Broadway con I didn't have shows, and I had to like actually go and immerse myself. So this one I'm a little like wistful because I'm doing I'm working like going to do like things and stuff. I want to like go and meet people and go see people. So I'm good, but I could be better. Mm -hmm. So the Beetlejuice fandom is out in like full force. Here. It's out of control. Yeah. Did you expect the show to have such a big impact? No. And I mean that. I'm, I think that the, the way that the Beetlejuice fan thing is happening mm -hmm. is beyond, I think, I imagine everyone involved in the show's wildest dreams because we knew we had a fun and interesting source material because the movie is culty in its own right. Mm -hmm. And the cartoon was like a big thing for some people that grew up in when I was younger. Um, but I had no idea. I just figured it was going to be good because I knew I was in rehearsals. I was like, this is a good show. But then when we opened, it didn't do the thing we all thought it was going to do. And then people got wind of it. And then we did the Tony performance and released the album. And it just tornadoed into this. TikTok. Oh, TikTok. Yes, of course. Something I still don't understand, yet I'm all over it. Um, it is. just blew up in this way that I think things used to blow up when people were much younger, when like people, when there wasn't a ton of internet, people would actually just talk about something. Now it's just easier to talk about it because people can do it online. And it just overnight became this tidal wave of fans, which I'm very grateful for because not only does it mean I get to do my show more, but the audiences that are coming to see our shows are wild. It's like this mix of a concert, Rocky Horror Picture Show, soccer stadium type energy. Well, the show was supposedly a lot raunchier in DC. Oh yes. Yeah. So yes. What was the funniest thing that you got cut? Um, can I be? Can I be uh -huh. raunchy? Go for it. Um, there, there was tons. I mean, the show was definitely rated R, if not maybe even a little rated NC-17 in DC. Uh, and I'll just before I even tell you, the, the reason we cut a lot of that was because we realized the show was good enough and funny enough without it, and we wanted more people to be able to see it. So if you were a little more conservative with your comedy. We still wanted you to see it. So we just cut enough that we widened the tent of our little circus enough that families could come to. And maybe they've learned a, new, a couple new words throughout the process. But there was a moment in the show, in the opening number, where I said, um, talking about the netherworld, that everybody goes both ways in the netherworld, sexually. Uh -huh. And the way, I, the way I did that was I sort of did this gesture. <laughs> um, which is super raunchy and not at all, you know, it's not even suggestive, it's just completely what it is. So we cut that, but I do, by the way, of all the things we've cut that are raunchy, I mourn that one the most, because it got an enormous laugh. Mm -hmm. One of the few things that like, rather than a groan, it was like very funny, mm -hmm. but it was too raunchy, yeah. I agree. Okay, so now on a different note, so the news about the closing, <laughs> yes. is very upsetting to the community. I'm it's sorry, not closing, guys. Whole, it's like, being evicted. The Beetlejuice movement, what can you tell us about like, what goes on behind the scenes with something like that? Well, let me, let me repeat something Joy just said, is that we, we are, the, the, it's, it's not some sort of press sort of shenanigan stunt thing to say that we're being evicted. Mm -hmm. And if you've read the news, it is sort of what's happening. Like, mm -hmm. that's, there's no better word for it. Um, and no one's, you know, violently upset. Nobody is, like, resentful of the, uh, the music man for coming in. It's show business, and that's business, right? We forget that that's a word. Um, but we are, our producers are, and I can tell you this with full uh, you know, honesty, that our producers are actively looking for a new space. Whether, if it's in New York, great. If it's not, great. You know, a tour is coming up. Probably somewhere that's not America is coming up. So it, Beetlejuice will live on no matter what. It has too big of a fan base and too many people want to see it. So it just is a matter of, like, is it going to be in New York? We don't know. We hope so. Um, but the spirits around the theater, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> are high because we are having such a good time. I think it would be very different if we were being evicted from the theater and also we were playing to like half houses that were barely there emotionally. But we're playing to packed, full standing room only houses, dressed up, screaming, ready to go, drunk, you know, wackos coming to see our show. And that is just joyful for us because what other Broadway show gets this type of audience? Mm -hmm. None, I, don't, I mean, I haven't, haven't been a part of one in recent years that has been this wild. So that's very good. So we don't even kind of, it's in the back, not even the back of our mind mm -hmm. that like it's coming to an end. It's more just like we're living completely in the moment and having a blast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the cast has been very vocal on social media, huh? like using the hashtag tweeting. 
So how do you think social media has like changed the way that ad, uh, actors can advocate for themselves? I mean, I think social media has changed everything. I think, you know, social media has changed everything. 80% for the worst, 20% for the better, I would say. Uh, just because, you know, n news used to be real news and now news is whatever you want to make it. <laughs> Um, and so you can also just lie on social media. So, you know, who's to say whatever is true? Uh, but it's nice. I like certain forms of social media because it allows you to, for lack of a better word, brand, um, for me, positivity. You know, types of like learning experiences and positivity and, you know, to be able to just remind people that you're allowed to be joyous on the internet too, not just snarky. Um, you're allowed to like connect over the things you like rather than connect over the things that you hate, which I think is a big part of the internet, is like, oh, I hate that show. Oh, me too, let's talk about it. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right way to go about things. You know, I, don't, I, I think that it's, you're allowed to, but I have always found more joy in going like, I love blue crayons. And someone's like, oh my God, I love blue crayons. It's like, let's talk about blue crayons for a while. And I think with going back to your question, hashtags and all that kind of stuff, are, you're able to like search an actual theme of something. And you can find other people from in, you know, Namibia that also like the thing that you like. And I think that's a beautiful thing about the internet is that you really can connect over things that you like if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've seen a lot of Beetlejuice cosplay so far. There's one in this room. BroadwayCon, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So if you were going to BroadwayCon undercover, who would uh -huh. you cosplay as? As Beetlejuice or anybody? Anybody. Um, yeah. That's a great question. Um, I would like to cosplay as Serge from the, from, from the play Art. <laughs> It's just Very literally, popular. it's literally just slacked in a button-up t-shirt. <laughs> no, let me give you a more interesting answer. I would like to cosplay as um, the grandmother from the ferryman. <laughs> just in a wheelchair with a blanket over her sleeping. And just sit in a corner and every once in a while have a monologue about what it was like when she was younger and her husband and then go back to sleep. But that's mainly because I like to sleep. <laughs> that, that's a great answer. Thank you. I thought so too. <laughs> so, if Beetlejuice, ex uh, if, uh, sorry, Broadway Con existed when you were a kid, yeah. who, would have you been, who would you have been excited to meet? Oh my god, if Broadway Con existed as a kid, I wouldn't have gone to school. I would have just waited for Broadway Con <laughs> the entire year and then failed all my classes. Um, I would, if, uh, back then when I was a kid, my favorite show, it still pretty much is, was The Who's Tommy. Mm -hmm. And Michael Cerberus was, is still one of my favorite uh, human beings. I mean, he's just, I've, Loved him as an actor, I loved him as anything. Then I got to meet him, and he's just as lovely as you would hope he'd be. So I would come in the hopes, when I was a kid, to have met Michael Cerberus and talked to him about Tommy and all that kind of stuff. And also probably Jonathan Price from Miss Saigon, mm -hmm. uh, just because they're, who's better than that? Um, I mean, it would be a hard time trying to find a Jonathan Price trying to play an Asian character now, but the times were different then. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that and probably I mean, when I was a kid, Audra McDonald was still so lightning hot. Like, I probably would have also wanted to meet her. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, there's so many. There's so many. I, the cast of I would have gotten. I would have done a Children of Eden meetup. <laughs> I would have been the only one there. Um, well, you'd be surprised because this is the place where you meet everyone. That's right. You're person. right. This is like the internet come to life. Okay. Just everybody from everywhere sharing something they love. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's probably it. I would have been. I would have went to everything. I would have <laughs> thrived here at RobicCon. And what's the craziest thing you've seen here so far? I just saw it. I just, the craziest thing I've seen at BroadwayCon so far was I've seen a ton of Beetlejuice costumes and, and really clever ones too. And what I love, first of all, is I love that people are dressing up as Beetlejuice, the musical characters, mm -hmm. rather than just Beetlejuice characters. That to me is like so heartwarming to know that we've now reached this level of like, you can dress up as the musical characters. I just saw a guy dressed up as Beetlejuice and he had a full Beetlejuice costume on and a sandworm wrapped around his neck coming down. And the sandworm moved as a puppet because one of his arms was not real. And that freaked me out because it was so awesome looking and real. Um, I hope that kid gets so many pictures taken of him. He deserves it. It was really, really excellent. We got the pictures. Oh, you did? Yeah, excellent. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's hard to miss. But that's the craziest thing I've seen yeah. so far. Unfortunately, I haven't seen a ton because I've been sort of in small rooms chatting. <laughs> not that I don't like chatting, by the way.